Another day later and I'm still working on this project. Made some progress. So I've got the web side of it all working and I can command that LED. Just trust me, it's working. And what I did is I wired up the first MOSFET to the fan and I just paralleled it with the LED. It's on the correct pin. And if I put the ESP into reset, you can see the GPIO goes out, LED goes out. And once it goes through setup, the setup portion of the sketch, it initiates high. And there we go, both came on. Fan spinning, these are cute little fans. They don't draw much at all. But uh, if I go on the website, I can toggle this, which is hosted by the ESP and we're good, we're golden. Six more, five more, and we're good to go. So this will be my scent in VR, my so I can smell things. So each of these bottles is gonna have a scent, and yeah, we're golden. Back at the scent VR project again tonight, and predominantly the updates are in the code, but this is online on my Wi-Fi, and if I turn bank one, on and off by the web page. Uh, our fans now MOSFET controlled and working perfectly. So I have two banks of three and the web page just controls them. And then right now it's just tied to bank one on and off, but they'll be uh, automatically randomized within them depending on which bank you have active. So three and three, so just random times, random fans. Working pretty cool, happy with this. And these little fans, they move a heck of a lot of air. They are really powerful little suckers for, for no uh, no current, really. So happy about that. So today, 90 kilometer an hour winds out there today. It's crazy. Got a couple of new toys for the TS2 I'd like to install, I'll show you. So this is the second try at a display for this. And I'm hoping it's the correct one this time. With any luck, this should fire up. Let's see if we can do this on camera. I've already routed the wires through and plugged them into the main board. The main board was labeled TS35 or 24. Okay, this one to this side, I believe. This one to this side, I believe. All the power, maybe we'll have a display. Famous last words. It helps if you plug it in. And sure enough, we have a display. It's really, really dim. Let's see if we can help that. That's a little better, but not much. Let's try adjustment. That's for the laser. Oh, this works good. Control, tool, there's the board, the firmware, Wi-Fi indicator. Yeah, doesn't seem to be any adjustment for brightness or contrast. But can we move the laser? Sure can. We can move Y-axis, X-axis. All right, now we have a cool machine. That makes the TS2 truly top of the line. This was my favorite laser before. This is the TS2 from Two Trees. Uh, check out the video on it. But now it's, yeah, this is, this is the key now. Move the Z. Sure enough, we can move Z. No problem. No limit switch on the Z. So I hit the end stop there, but no harm done. Go down one. Yeah, works, perfect. I also got this from Two Trees. This was sent to me. Uh, this is the rotary attachment for this. Um, I didn't tell them I would do anything with it. I said I'd try and work it into a video if I can. So we'll assemble this someday. But uh, I don't like how it comes. It comes as lots of pieces. Uh, I wish it was uh, assembled a little bit more or I'd show you it right now but I don't have time today to put it together. But 
um, there's what it'll look like with this collet and jaw system on the end so you can do mugs and stuff no matter whether they're round shaped or not you can just clamp it so they're completely uh, parallel to your work surface uh, which remains the same distance for focus from the laser which is key but uh, yeah that's the unit uh, it's got a few corrections in the book here different chuck instructions yeah pretty cool uh, it's a pretty low profile unit i think oh geez it is too look at that it's really low profile so that that's really handy and then fully adjustable for the rollers here that's pretty cool and, and heavy duty heavy 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 aluminum this box weighs a ton so yeah pretty cool we'll give it a go maybe in an upcoming video bit of fun in the shop today. I've been testing out this new Flying Bear laser and uh, man oh man. These things are all pretty much even keel when it comes to the lasering. So 10 watt actually works really good for projects around one's lab like the K40 is nice but these are these are really nice. I like these and nice and simple but this like each one has its own idiosyncrasies like this one has this really cool clever air ducting thing that just pulls from the laser and dumps it out through a filter at the back how clever is that and not to mention a good touch screen but they're all different they're all a little bit of fun but i've set up the shop more for shooting now i've got a couple of lights to bring you guys better quality and uh well, everything is the way you've seen it in previous videos, but I'm working away on it. Remember like four years ago, uh, if you were here on the channel, you saw, I said when I started working on this shop and showed you, I said I wanted it to be my ultimate little shop. Well, we're pretty much there. I get to make things as we need them and yeah, pretty cool. And now is the hurry up and wait while we're running a cut. This thing, this is way better than I anticipated. Uh, without fan, that, that's the ticket. If you're building a laser, build yourself one of those suction tubes with that filter set up. Holy smokes, there's no smell in here. That, <laughs> that thing is impressing me. That's pretty cool. But this is what it looks like behind the scenes. I've got, I finally brought a softbox out here and uh, I had to upgrade the inside lights earlier this year. So it worked out good. And yeah, time lapse camera, light, light, and then I use the cell phone for other shots too. And we're, we're cooking, we're cooking with gas. This is a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I sure do. So this has been in the workshop forever and I've never put it to use. And in between projects, uh, between working on the Scent VR, I wanted something to uh, start playing with. I like to jump to other projects. <laughs> Obviously you guys know that, but to keep life interesting, I like to bounce around. And I've been meaning to do some machine learning stuff for two years now, and I just never get around to it. So uh, this Wii U terminal from Seed, I'm not really a fan of Seed. Um, I just haven't had good luck working with them at all. But uh, this is a neat little product that should work with EdgeML directly. But also it takes these, I think they call them Grove connectors? I'm not sure. But I have this Hypico kit that was sent to me a while ago and it takes these JST style connectors. Well, they don't work directly as the Grove connectors, but I found out if you snip the, the clip off, they're perfect pin spacing and perfect connector. Check that out. So this little kit, I'm stealing the wires because I don't have any of these. And also conveniently, now I have a whole bunch of sensors I can use. So I have uh, ultrasonic, uh, DHT11, and a six axis IMU. Uh, or is it? Yeah, six axis IMU. So a really, really nice inertial measurement unit. I also have a camera I like to play with. 
This is a older, low quality one, but it's all set up, um, broken out to work well with uh, the different Arduino, uh, I believe in the Pi Pico, uh, but the Arduino is this one. This is the 32 BLE, I think, but anyway, yeah, we're gonna give them a go. One more task, I'm completing this winter too, or it's a never ending task, is I'm filling these, uh, uh, trays that I keep getting from dollar store. They got another shipment in, so I uh, cleared them out this summer when I saw that they had them. These are these larger, uh, similar to the Plano cases from Duramax. They're based out of uh, Montreal in Canada, as far as near as I could figure, but I made one up with just uh, my drone hardware, just my quadcopter stuff. Uh, this is all the motor hardware and prop nuts and stuff that I had from all the different kits over the years and just various small things, camera lenses and uh, uh, lens covers and stuff. And I think there should be some GoPro lenses in here somewhere and stuff. Uh, yeah, drone hardware. And then I made one for relays because all my relays were chucked in a bin and I accidentally uh, ordered one of these and I already had one. So yeah, won't make that mistake again. My good old brother label maker comes in and I'm labeling them all on the same side so they look nice on the shelf. And these actually lock together so they don't slide off, which is pretty cool on the shelf because my uh, resin plastic shelves tend to sag a little bit if I really wear them, weigh them down, which I'm trying not to do. But uh, yeah, each time when I get time, I go through the, uh, the big overflowing bins and decide what can I make a flat storage. This took a very large amount of space and condensed it down to a small tray, which is pretty cool.